Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In true Tesla fashion, with a record for quarterly profits, the stock price goes down. Hardly that unexpected, at least that the stock price didn't rocket. I'm really not expecting much for the first half of the year, by which I mean Q3, and we'll have to wait for those results at the end of that quarter. Which means don't be overly surprised if the stock price stays relatively flat for the time being. So what will it take to see a real bump in the stock price? To take Tesla into its new stock price cycle? Aside from any new breakthroughs or announcements of course, what is actually going to make the Tesla stock price move the needle this year, possibly north of $1,000? We're still hearing that if we remove regulatory credits, then Tesla still wouldn't have achieved a gap profit, which is true. That's the problem. There are all these minor things holding down the automotive business. It just needs to take off to make these other items look insignificant. $500 million in credits is still a lot when you compare it to $1.86 billion in gross profit from the autos, along with the energy and services side of the business costing nearly $200 million every quarter, then the auto industry has to subsidize that too. What is required for the auto business to really break out on its own so we can actually see the auto profits impact the business so it's no longer tied into regulatory credits or having to subsidize energy substantially. I think we need autos to achieve a gross profit of around $4 billion. And I think that can be achieved with a 28% margin, meaning they need revenue of just over $14 billion, which equates to an additional $5 billion from Q1. Based solely on financial performance, I would say Tesla needs to hit this level to start impacting the stock price. It would likely take non-GAAP profit to around $2.5 billion a quarter, which would also equate to $10 billion a year, or a P ratio of around 70 at current prices. Q1 was actually really good, but the success of it was hidden by the S and X lines being down. Not only did another $200 million or so get added on top of the cost of goods sold for production of the new lines, but we're lacking huge sales and profit from them too. But it was great to hear that there will be twice the S and X sales than previously. So this investment and downtime will certainly be worth it. We've also had a glimpse as to just how much impact the S and X have in terms of revenue and profit. When they're added back into full swing, it will really have a decent effect on everything. And now we know Tesla will start deliveries of the S in May, which means we will get a few sales for this quarter, but it probably won't be much more than 5,000 units. Again, this won't have a massive impact on Q2, but once they ramp up, then Tesla should be up to 20,000 units for Q3 and possibly at 30,000 units in Q4 for the S and X which will be felt in the market. This would equate to roughly an extra $2 billion in Q3 and $3 billion in Q4. S and X attribute for around half the growth we require. There is still a lot of Model Y production left to ramp up at Fremont and Shanghai. I think we could see almost an extra 50,000 units a quarter still to come here. That could be over an extra $2 billion as well. If Berlin starts production in July, then that would contribute slightly to Q3 too. Nothing was overly mentioned in the earnings call about when Berlin production would start, but it sounds like everything seems to be on track. Berlin could do 20,000 units in Q3 and perhaps 50,000 in Q4. As for Austin, the Cybertruck may not be in production this year, but the Model Y should be. But nothing until Q4 most likely, and likely not even that many, perhaps 15,000 units or so. Elon's stock-based compensation is dwindling and will soon stop too. This is partly the reason for such a difference in the gap and non-gap profits. This is obviously temporary, and once it's finished, will increase profits dramatically. Therefore, to be honest, I can't see Q2 being much different from Q1. The biggest impact will be Shanghai ramping up the Model Y, possibly 20,000 more units than Q1, along with a few Model S deliveries. But we're going to be in the same ballpark as far as revenue and profits are concerned. It's just really going to require those high-end Model S and Xs to get selling again. But Q3 should be very good. The auto business should really start breaking out by this stage. The gross profits could very well start reaching $4 billion, which is some serious profit and will look very good for the company and stock price. With all these being equal, then I think this might be the turning point we've been waiting for. Again, Q4 should have made a big jump from Q3, with Berlin starting to ramp up and the Model S and X fully ramped up again, along with some extra units from Texas to bump it up a bit we could have an auto gross margin above $5 billion even, which really does start to make everything else look pale in comparison. 
Basically, unless there is some major breakthrough or announcement, then I wouldn't expect the stock price to be moving much until we actually hear the Q3 earnings or deliveries. Some of the things that could also make the stock price break out in the meantime are FSD, Tesla getting closer and closer. I'm expecting a feature complete version sometime next year, but Elon seems more confident. It's all about data from here on in by the sounds of it. So the more data Tesla are collecting, the better FSD is improving. It's possible any new major breakthrough could move the stock price slightly before Q3. An announcement on the Model 2, there's always a chance we could see the prototype over this period. Personally, I think it more likely it will happen in Q4, but didn't get any new information about Model 2 in the earnings call. Q4 sure has a lot going for it though. Any major breakthroughs in the 4680 batteries would be great. Elon said that they'd ordered most of the equipment for battery production in Berlin and Austin already, and it's down to the nitty gritty, and are optimistic on achieving volume production next year. This is good news but I'm not sure we'll see any 4680 breakthroughs this year really that will affect the stock price at least. I can't see any major breakthroughs in energy to move the needle. It sounds like installations are slowing down the energy business. Perhaps Tesla will want to end up being more proactive with their own solar farms to speed up the process, but Elon was getting very passionate about it on the earnings call. It's highly likely that Tesla will announce a new factory shortly, highly possible the Model 2 Terra factory in Shanghai, it would seem they have already secured the land, and it's an enormous area. I keep estimating the factory will have a capacity of 5 million cars a year. It's a possibility Tesla could announce a new factory elsewhere too. India and the UK are the most thought currently. To summarise, I really can't see the stock price doing a lot for the next 6 months or so. Sometimes the stock price just goes flat for a while, nothing too exciting happens, and there's a lot of waiting. Remember, this isn't a traditional tech company. They are manufacturing the largest consumer item in the world. It takes time. But just be realistic that there's a chance the stock price might bounce between $600 and $800 until around the Q3 deliveries are announced. On the other hand, please don't try and play the market expecting to stay in that range. There are several breakthrough potentials too that could take the stock price to above 1000 I think most likely a Model 2 preview or FSD advances might achieve this or it could just start to go up on its own for any other numerous reason, with something out of the blue, like a new partnership announced with Toyota. My point is, you don't want to be out of the market with Tesla at any stage. But after that five or so months, when we start getting rumours and estimates about Berlin and how well the SNX are doing, Shanghai and Fremont Model Y ramped, it will become a perfect storm, all coming together. I think there's also a bit more Model 3 Shanghai ramping to do too, we're talking a jump of 50% in revenue in Q4 from Q1. That doesn't sound too unachievable, really, does it? Right now, January and February 2022 options are looking pretty good. If the stock price keeps going down, that's likely what I'm going to be keeping my eye on. I think there would be a strong chance of it being between 1,000 and 1,200 in early 2022, and that's without any major breakthroughs or announcements, which we will probably hear about by then too. If Tesla are going to start manufacturing Model 2 by the end of the year, then they'll have to start building the factory this year. Therefore, we will likely have the announcement later in 2021. So hang in there. Think of this time as a buying opportunity if you're still building your position. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.